All right. There's four parts to the <laughs> there's four parts to the definition for the laws of equality. Remember, okay? Can you tell us, Josh? What what are the letters? The acronym, you know, we remember, we remember the letters? There's an R, an S, and a T. Very good. In fact, it is R-S-T-L. Bristol, R-S-T-L. Okay, Rochelle, R. Okay, Ben, Ben, R. R that's, uh, uh, sh hey, you're not, you're not Ben. Come on. Ben, Ben, R. Ben, reciprocity. <laughs> no? Okay, Mason, what's the R? Reflexive, right. The first law was... Reflexivity, okay, and that's x equals x, okay. I won't. We won't ask Kale, but we will ask Kyle. What's the second one? R S. Remember S. This is the S. Very good. And do you remember what symmetric means? Symmetric. Remember, like symmetry, the mirror. How did that? Only it's not plus because we're talking about, no, no, this is, these are the four laws of equality, so for equality, so what is it? Y equals X is the same as X. X equal, that's correct. So we have symmetry, X equals Y equals Y equals X, S, X, <laughs> R, S, T, remember T? Transitivity. Transitivity, and you remember, that's in the form of an in inference rule, right? Yeah, it's the X equals, equals Y. y equals Z, conclusion, correct. So transitivity is X equals Y and Y equals Z. If you know that that's true in all states, what's the definition of state? Ah, I caught you. You thought I was going to ask you. You thought I was going to ask you for the next one. But what's the definition of state? Oh, come on. Come on, you guys. Oh, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Okay. Okay, list of all the variables and their values, okay? List of all the variables. Come here, you, you'll get it, we'll get it. we we'll just keep going. You know, do you know that the neurons in your brain are just like the muscles in your arms whenever you do workout? Did you know that every time you try to remember and you memorize stuff and you exercise your brain and then you do logical reasoning, that the neurons actually physically grow and they, the connections are made just like your muscle responds to uh, weight-bearing exercises? Yeah. What if you say more connections? Yeah, it's all, it all has to do with the, the I mean, we, there are physiological reasons, uh, principles of how we learn. And so one of these things about repeating and asking again over and over, we'll, it, you know, we're strengthening. We are strengthening. Okay. So uh, the definition of state is a list of, what did you say? A list of what? A list of variables and their values. And this, this um, inference rule, this inference rule is, how do we interpret this inference rule, Ben? With, with this horizontal line, what does this mean? X equals Y. Equals Z in all what? We assume that, that if that's true in all states. In other words, in the states is the list. Then it follows that X equals Z. All right, Mason, what's the last one? The last one? L. Or no, Leibniz. 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 That's a hard one to write down. Yeah, it's That's a hard one to write down. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah, but do you remember how to write it down? Um, no. It's substituting equals for equals. So yeah. what's on oh, yeah. the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leib Leibniz Isn't was... No. What's on the top of the inference? Oh. What's on the top of the horizontal line? If we know that in all states... Y? Yeah, exactly. If we know that in all states x equals y, then any expression with one of the variables substituted for one thing is equal to that. Yeah, that's the functional way to write it. Mm -hmm. So here, so Leibniz, Leibniz, if x equals y in all states, then any expression with any variable replaced by this x is equal to that same expression with that variable replaced by y. That's Leibniz. Okay. Now. Um, what I would like to do next is there are three uh, exercises. They have parts A, B, C, D, E, you know, multi-part exercises that are due uh, Thursday. And I would like for us, what I want to do is I want to, 
go over these and do part A of each one because they're kind of confusing. So what I've done here is I have, uh, just in case you didn't bring your books, the exercises that are assigned are 1.7, 1.8, and 1.9. And um, actually probably what we should do in all of these is write down, these are all exercises to get us used to, to how Leibniz, so that we can understand in detail how Leibniz works. So let's write down Leibniz again. X equals Y, E, Z replaced by X equals E, Z replaced by Y. That's uppercase Y. Okay, so that's Leibniz. Now, let's just take a look at Let's take a look at this first question. Uh, there's a, you know, he has about a, he has a paragraph of instructions on what to do with this question. But the key question is, fill in the missing parts and write down what expression E is. So here's, we're going to do the solution to 1.7a. And what, what he's given us here, look at what he's given us. He's given us x equals x plus 2. So this is, obviously, capital X is what? little x, and then the little x plus 2 is y. y. So y is the little x plus 2. Are you with me here? Okay. And then what he says is e, and so over here on the left, 4x plus y is the e with z replaced by x, and he wants to know what goes in the question mark here. All right. That's, that's the question. But there's two parts to the question. He says, he says, fill in the missing parts and write down what expression E is. So whenever you answer this question, so here's the solution. We'll just do, we'll just do part A. So actually, there, so there's two things that we have to do. We have to fill in the missing part, and then we have to write down what the expression is. Okay, so first let's fill in the missing part. So we'll fill in the missing part. So, this, so here's, how, here's what you have to say. x equals x plus 2. And then here it's 4 times x plus y equals, and now we have to fill in the missing part. You know, you, you want to volunteer the answer there? So what is it? Close, but no cigar. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Would it be uh, 4 times x plus 2 plus 1? Yes, with the parens. Okay. okay. So this would be 4 times x plus 2 plus y. Now, do you see why it's this yeah. and not what you said? Okay. <laughs> as soon as you said it, you... <laughs> Okay, now, does everybody, th actually this is, this is the first part of the answer because it said fill in the missing part. Now why, how did you, Kyle, how did you, how did you get that? Well, I looked at the one we already had where it had x, which is one of the, uh, the variables in, in the expression, yeah. And then up here you said it, because x equals x plus 2, then that means 4 times x plus y has to equal if x equals x plus 2 in all states, then 4 times x plus y has to equal 4 times x plus 2 plus y. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Isn't it kind of odd that like, you have to assume that the first thing is true in all states? But, but it's actually not. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that, see, we went over that. We went over it. Yeah. That, that was your count. Remember, your, count, your, 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 your attempted counterexample. Yeah. But this, this is in fact true. If x equals x plus 2, and if x did equal x plus 2 in all states, then this would equal this. Now, it, it might not be, but that's irrelevant for the purpose of the exercise. That, but that's a good, does everybody understand what he's saying? It's impossible for x to equal x plus 2. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, how could x equal x plus 2? I mean, how could 7 equal 9? 7 doesn't equal 9, 
right? <laughs> but the point is, if x e if if we're just doing the manipulation, irregardless of whether this is true, if you did assume this, then this would follow. Is everybody with me on this? When we, but like because of it, it's the inference rule, we we do that, and then we would figure out that it wasn't true. Well, no, we we won't ever that? figure out that it's not true. We'll just we're just interested in the okay. manipulation here. We're not gonna. I thought like the next part would be like. No, I, no, no. Now the next part is the next part is. What is E? This is, so we're not done with the problem yet. So when you answer this, the, the parts to this problem, you, the other thing you have to write down is, is what is E? So what is, what is the expression E in this case? Now remember, this is, this E is going to have a Z in it. Are you with me? So, say it again. Yeah. So, is it, so E is 4 times Z plus Y, all right? So this is, so when you do answer questions one point, the question 1.7, make sure you, get, you give two things. There's two parts to the answer, right? So, so that was the problem, this is the answer, right? It's always a little confusing to, I, I, okay. So now let's, um, and then you can do the rest. You get free homework point. Do this one too, you get free homework points. <laughs> do, do part A, make sure and do part A. <laughs> okay, now, what is this next one? In this next problem, he's got a little table, and I just put the first part of the table here, and he says, for each of the expressions, E was Z replaced by X, and hence, X equals Y below, write the resulting expression, E was Z replaced by Y. Well, except that he's giving us E, he's giving us, yeah, I guess it is. Kind of, yeah, he's, 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 give, he's giving us E with, uh, yeah, this one's, e, this one's easier. I think this is, and there's only one part to this problem. So, what's, so what is the answer? What, what is the, the resulting expression E was, in other words, he's giving us, what's he giving us? He's giving us this and this, and he wants us, yeah, this is kind of like the last one, isn't it? And he just wants us to write down this one. So if you know that, if you know that, um, that the, if you know that x equals b plus c, then what is x plus y plus w equal to? C plus c plus y plus w. Yes. B plus C plus Y plus W. All right? So, is everybody? Uh, yeah, we did, we did a rup. We did a remove unnecessary parentheses. Which, by the way, is one of the, pr one of the problems that some people, you got to be careful with which, what's necessary and what's unnecessary. <laughs> gotta, okay, that's going to be important that we. The way that's written is two separate things, like the hint on the right. Yeah, if you have your book, oh, do you, it, it, no, no, it's like this. I, I, I copied this from the book. Look, just turn to page, just turn to the, see? That's a lot better. Oh, what numbers? Oh, did I flip these? No, 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 no. It's just the same compared to the other problem. The hint is just on the top. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now, so you can do the rest of those. And now for 1.9, um, it says, for each of the following pair of expressions, E was Z replaced by X and E was Z replaced by Y, identify a hint, X equals Y, that would show them to be equal. Oh, no. And indicate what E is. So here again, there's two parts to the problem. Right? So now what's he giving us? Now, now what is he giving us? He's giving us this one and this one, right? So I think maybe what you could do is you could, you could say x plus y times x plus y, x plus y times x plus y, and then, so that's this one, and then, we, then, and then we're saying equals x plus y times what is that? Y plus X? 
Oh, I did. X plus y times and x plus y times y plus x. And what he's asking us is, what goes here? Identify a hint. Okay, this. Symmetry. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, so what would the hint? What would that? Be, what what has? What would have to go up here in order in order to have x plus y times x plus y equal x plus y times y plus x? Well, you'd have to have what? X plus y. Yeah, that's the, and that's what, does everybody see how that works? So this one would be x plus y equals y plus x. But we're not done yet because there's another part to the problem. And indicate what E is. Now this is a little tricky. So this is using E, here again, using E equals Yes. Now, how did you get that? Yeah. Right, because this is with Z replaced by, yeah. yeah. I mean, in one case, Z, Z replaced by X, Z replaced by X plus Y, and then Z replaced by Y plus X. All right? So this is a little this is a little trickier, but you see how that works. So again, two parts for this one, yeah. So I think we're all I think we're all good to go for the homework for Thursday. Any questions? Any questions? All right. Okay, now we are actually going to do um, a little bit of programming now. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you guys, I'm not quite sure, you've had a week now. Have you guys done the assignment statement yet in C++? Well, here it is. Okay, now, um, we have a little bit of um, difference in terminology between the way we are going to write our programs in here and the way you write your programs in C++. Okay, so in this course, the symbol for the assignment statement looks like this. Well, actually what it looks like is the same, it, we use the same symbol as for textual substitution. Okay, so uses uses the same symbol as textual substitution, which is What's that textual substitution? Uh, colon, colon equals, yeah. All right. So, here's an example. X colon equals Y plus 3. Now, it's really important that um, we that we um, know how to pronounce these symbols correctly, okay? And the word that we're going to use for this is gets. And the way we're going to say this is x gets y plus 3. All right, this is not x equals y plus 3, it's x gets y plus 3. And what this programming statement does is the effect is to change the State. And what's the definition of state? <laughs> List of variables and their values. Okay, so the effect, 
by Jove, I think she's got it. Effect is to change the state. <laughs> Equations now. He's applying it to real life. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, I, we, we won't go there. <laughs> All right. Now, and here's he, and, and here here's an, here's an example. Here's an example. Let me give you an, another example of of how it changes the state. Suppose we have an initial state, and the initial state, which a list of variables and their values, so suppose the variables are x3, y8, z6. x3, y8, z6. That's the state, all right? And then suppose that the assignment is this. Suppose the assignment is y, how do you say this? Gets. Gets y plus 1. All right. Then what would happen is, and I'm sure you can figure this out, probably without me telling you, what do you suppose the final state's going to be? X, plus three. X, plus three. 3, Y, 9, Z, six. 6. Does everybody see that? X, 3, Y, 9, Z, 6. Now, does everybody see what this assignment statement does, how it works? What it does is it takes whatever is on the right-hand side of the assignment, and it takes the current value of all of any variables that are on the right side and it does the computation and it calculates the value and that value and then there's always a single variable on the left hand side you can have any you can have an expression on the right hand side but the left hand side has to be a single variable are you with me and that variable gets that gets that value and so it changes the state so now instead of the state being x3 y8 z6 the list of variables and their values is x3, y9, z6. Because the current, the, the current value of y is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So y gets 9. Does everybody see how that works? That's the assignment statement. Okay. Now, I have a, some unfortunate news for you. This is confusing. Because, um, unfortunately, the people who designed the programming, common programming languages in use today they did not use very good notation. And, it's, and so I have a little table for you here. Um, in math and in formal methods, we have one way of, of notating these operations. And in, have you, have you guys ever, well, you guys are doing C++. You guys heard of Java? Okay, have you heard of, yeah, there's another up and coming language called Python. It's a really slick language, actually. It's, it's the newest of, the, of these. And, um, and, so, and what happens is, um, in, in math and in formal methods, this is the assignment statement, right? Guess what it is in C++ Java? Java is equal. Evil. It's equal, well, it's the equal sign. Yeah. And that is really, really bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but, you know, <laughs> if, 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 if I could go back and rewrite history, one of the things I would do, besides a lot of political acts, I mean, but in, 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 if I could go back and rewrite it, I would, I would force them to have not done this. Because, because when we say equals, how do you say equals in, in these programming languages? Anybody know? The other way. Yeah, it's equals, e it's this. Now look what's so confusing about this. Equal, I mean, this is the assignment statement, but it's the same symbol for equals in math and in formal methods. See? 
And what's really unfortunate about this is that there were some early languages like Algol and Pascal, and they did use this for the assignment statement. You know, and it was good. And they used this for equals. And I, I, I promise you that when you start, as you go, you know, enter your programming careers, you are going to write this for this, and it's going to be a bug, and it's going to be hard for you to find because you, you, you're, you're going to say, oh, this equals, and you're going to say equals. You're, you're not going to do equals equals. And it'll be a bug, and, and Jason's smiling because he's done it numerous times, I bet. <laughs> but you use the assignment statement so much more than you use the equals statement. So it's yeah. easier to hit. Oh, one whole key press. <laughs> one whole key press more to do this. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> How long? You know. A millisecond, maybe, to hit that one extra key. Yeah, well, anyway. Was it all the assignment statements you do? No, 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 no. Not in the whole program. Okay. Now. <laughs> okay, now. We need another little vocab. Lesson here, valid, the word valid. This is going to be an easy one to understand. Valid means true in all states. And what's a state? Definition of state? List of variables and their values. So if an expression is true in all states, in other words, every possible list of, val you know, list of values that you could come up with, then that expression is, called, is valid. That's what we mean by valid. You are not assuming anything is actually true? Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. We're not assuming anything. It's just, it's re it really is true in all states. Can we assume it's valid? Well, actually, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, can we assume it's valid? Well, you know, that's what we basically what we do in a, that's basically what we do in an inference right. rule. We, we are assuming that the top is valid. That's another way of saying that, yeah, 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 yeah. So, we, in fact, we, we, yeah, so, yeah, so the answer is we do, in fact, do that with inference rules. Okay, now, the next thing that we need to, learn is there was a famous computer scientist, he's still living in fact, his name is Anthony, his last name is pronounced Hoare, H-O-A-R-E, he's British, okay, and H-O-A-R-E this is called the Hoare triple. Well. <laughs> okay. And here's what the Hoare triple looks like. Obviously, it's a triple, so it, there's three parts to it. Okay. Looks like this. P, S, and Q. And each one of these three parts to the Hoare triple has a, has a name. Okay. This first one, P, is called the is called the precondition. 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 All right. So this is the precondition. This S is the statement. And this, well, if the one that went before is the precondition, the one that comes after must be the? Condition. Starts with a Q. Question. No, no, sorry. <laughs> so it also starts with a P, but we couldn't use the same letter. Yeah, 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 post condition. Quotient. 
<laughs> okay, so we have precondition, statement, and postcondition. Now, we have to understand what these things are. Okay, the P, the precondition, and the Q, the postcondition, both of these are Boolean expressions. Okay? They can be either true or false. There. Yeah. Oh, did I use the word Boolean then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we actually haven't. Next chapter is, is we'll learn precisely what Boolean expressions are, but you're familiar with them from algebra, like x is less than 5. That's a Boolean expression because it's either true or false. Are you with me? And it's an expression because an infix operator, what are the four parts, five parts <laughs> of definition of expression? Are there four? Yeah, there's four, you're right. Uh-oh, you don't know this yet? The first part is constant or variable. The second part is if E is, a, if e is an expression, parentheses, E parentheses is an expression. If circle is a unary prefix operator, then and E is an expression, then circle E is an expression, and then if star is a binary infix operator, and yeah, and E and F are expressions, then E star F yeah. is an expression. Okay, so anyway, these are Boolean expressions. Now this S in the middle, this is a program statement. So actually, th this can represent a, a complete program. This S could be a, 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 a this program, this is a program statement. And what program statement have we, have we just learned? That one. Oh, we have just learned the assignment statement. Notice we called it the assignment statement. So that's an example of a programming statement. Okay. Now, this next one is not in the book in quite this way, but I'm gonna I'm gonna write it down, and you need to uh, you need to remember what it is. This is this is this is as important as the definition of an expression. <laughs> okay. So here we go. This is the interpretation. Interpretation of the Hoare triple. I actually met Tony Hoare, shook his hand, didn't wash my hand for a week. <laughs> He's famous. <laughs> um, no, I'm not. He 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 gave a. Oh, the hand. Yeah, I am kidding about that. <laughs> I am kidding about washing my hand, but I really did meet him. Okay. Um, you know, it's like uh, you know, like a century from now, he'll be he'll be like one of the, he'll be like Newton is, you know, in physics. A lot of these guys are, are just they're still some of them are still alive. Um, That's why not did he invent C++? No, a guy by the name of Strewstrip invented C++, uh, and he's he's still alive. He's at uh, U U University of Texas. Uh, I forget which campus. Uh, anyway, Interp anyway, so th this is the interpretation of the whole triple. If P is true, if P is true, and you execute S, and you execute S, S terminates, S terminates, and Q is guaranteed. And Q is guaranteed to be true. All right? That's the interpretation of the Hoare triple. And that you need to really, really know. So we're going to. box it here, okay? Now, I think what the best way to do this is um, to write down some valid Hoare triples and some Hoare triples that are not valid so that you can see how it works with the assignment statement. Okay, so here we go. You know the first thing I'm going to ask you Thursday morning. 
OK, so here are some examples. Now check this out. Precondition x equals 0, statement, now how do you pronounce this? How do you say this statement? Good. X gets x plus 1. Post condition, x is greater than 0. Now, so here's the question. If x equals 0 is true, right? And you execute this statement, x gets x plus 1, it terminates, and x is greater than 0 is guaranteed to be true. Is that valid? Is that, do you believe it? Yeah, yeah that's valid. This is a valid Hart triple. But can x not be like negative? We're saying, oh, okay. if you assume, if p is a precondition, if you assume that if, if, p is z, if x equals 0 in the initial state, and you execute this statement, is, is this guaranteed to be true? This is like a contract. You know when you have a guarantee? You guys, when's the last time you bought a, I don't know, iPod or whatever? And you have a guarantee, right? This is, we guarantee this, right? This is like a, con, this is like a contract, it's a guarantee, okay? <laughs> okay, but how, how about this? X is greater than five, x gets x plus 1, x is greater than 0. Do you think this is valid? In other words, if x is greater than 5, and then you execute the statement x gets x plus 1, so if it's greater than 5, that means it must be what? 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever, right? It's up on up, right? And you do x gets x plus 1. Is it guaranteed that x is greater than 0? Is it? Is that guaranteed? Yeah, this, so this is valid, right? I mean, because after all, if, if x is 6 or 7 or 8 or 9, and you do x gets x plus 1, afterwards it's going to be what? Six, seven, seven, yeah. seven, uh, eight. 7 or 8 or 9, or eight, and all those are greater than 0, right? No. Are you with me? How about this? x plus 1 is greater than 0. x gets x times 2, x is greater than 0. Well, I mean, suppose x is like 9, right? Suppose x is 9, are you with me? 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 is greater than 0, right? Okay, so, and then if you do 9 gets 9 times, uh, excuse me, if you do x gets x times 2 and x is 9, What's 9 times 2? 18. 18. So x gets 18. Oh, x is greater, and 18 is greater than 0. So is this valid? Yeah. Not for 0. I'm skeptical. Not for like. Is this guaranteed? Yeah, if this like is true. Yeah, this is not valid. I mean, it was, it worked oh, yeah. in that, with that one example that I gave yeah, it, but. Okay, so this one's not valid. And so what was your. How about zero? Yeah. yeah if, so zero plus one is one. One is greater than zero. Yeah. X gets x times two. Zero times two is zero. So x gets zero. But zero is not greater than zero. So that wasn't guaranteed. And did you say we could use a negative? Yeah, negative, yeah, negative one maybe. Oh, no. No, no, that wouldn't work. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, negative point nine or something like that. Yeah. So there's other examples where, where it doesn't work, right? So therefore, it's not valid. This, it's, it's not, it doesn't work all the time. And all, you know, are, are you with me? So, th so this is not valid. And how about this one? X is greater than negative 2. X gets X plus 1. X is greater than 0. Still not valid. This one's not valid either? Yeah. Doesn't work for negative 1? Yeah. Negative 1 is greater than negative 2. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so x gets 0. But 0 is not greater than 0, so you're right. That's also not valid. 
Okay, so now we learned the assignment statement, right? We learned the definition of a Hoare triple, and we have some examples here of the Hoare triple, and now guess what we're going to do? We're going to put together, we're going to combine the Hoare triple with the assignment statement. And we're going to wind up with the definition of assignment. And here it is. Are you ready for this? You should wait. <laughs> okay. Okay, check this out, sports fans. R, okay, so this brace, this brace means we're writing down a what? True statement. Well, we're, a precondition. We're writing down a precondition of a Hoare triple. And here we have R, and guess what we have here? Textual substitution, uh -oh. X what? replaced by E, textual substitution, close brace. So now, so this is the precondition. And we have something with a textual substitution here, right? Okay. And now here we're going to have our assignment statement. X gets E. So that's our statement. And then here is our post condition state, our post condition, and this is R. So this R is the same as this R, but it, this R has X replaced by E in it. Now, we have to point out one important thing here. We have the same symbol here, right? But they mean two different things. We, we, know, what, we know which one by the context. Which one is this? Is this gets or is this re replaced by? Gets. Yeah, this is the assignment, gets. quote, gets, whereas this one is textual substitution, which we say replaced by, right? Yeah. Okay, so this one is text substitution replaced by. All right? And I think if, I, if, if we take a look at a few examples, I think we will, I think you'll see I think you, I can convince you that, that this is, in fact, the, the, yeah, this is, in fact, the definition of, the, of, of what happens when you do an assignment. Now, uh, actually, before we go on, I want to just write down one statement. It seems a little backwards, but check this out. Do you, do you, you understand that whenever we do a textual substitution, we have a recipe for doing that? I mean, you know what textual substitution is. If I tell you to do a textual, there's a recipe that you follow to do the textual substitution. Are you with me? Yeah. So this is like a recipe for what you do with R. What's interesting about this definition is that R, the post condition is given. This is a calculation that you do. So basically what this is saying is that you calculate the precondition from the post condition. It seems a little weird. It seems a little backward, but that's the way it is. So let me write that down. You calculate, yeah, it's kind of like working backwards, isn't it? Okay, well, you'll see, well, you'll see later, see, you, why that works. You calculate, you calculate the precondition from the post condition, from the post. You calculate the precondition from the postcondition. And so <clears throat> we'll do some examples here. And what I'll do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave out the precondition and you and you can calculate it for me. Okay? So, so here we go. Here's the first one. Blank, fill in the blank. X gets x plus one. Post condition, x is greater than 4. So 
So Kyle, what do you think? If we say, if we say the post condition is, we, we want to guarantee that x is greater than 4, and what we're going to do here is we're going to do x gets x plus 1. Then what, what will go here? Wait, 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 Kyle. That's funny, I thought your name was Josh. <laughs> X plus one. So, so that would be what? So what would go here? Oh, X plus one is greater than four. Exactly. X plus one is Does everybody see that now now do you believe this? Because what is if X plus one is greater than four, that means X is greater than what? Three. X is greater than three. Well does this make sense? If if X if it, hold on. If X is greater than three, if X is greater than three and you and you do x gets x plus 1. Is it guaranteed that x is greater than 4? Yeah. 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 See? It works. Yeah? Does everybody see that that, that that works like that? Okay, here's another one. Fill in the blank. Okay, Josh, now's your chance. x times y. So the statement is y gets 6, x times y is greater than 0. So the precondition must be what? X times 6 is greater than 0. Yeah, x times 6 is greater than 0. By the way, what does it mean for x times y to be greater than 0? They're both positive. Or, and not zero. or, or, they're both negative. or they're both negative. So in other words, this means that x and y have the same sign, right? x and y have the same sign. They're either both positive. And what's another way? If x times 6 is greater than 0, what does this mean? X, x, is, positive. x is positive. Right. That's an, uh, so if x is positive and you do y gets 6, you know that x times y is greater than 0. And you know that y is positive. Yeah. Okay. Now here's another one. Uh, x gets x times 2. Post condition is x equals 10. Yeah, Rochelle? Yeah, yeah. So x times, yeah, that's it. That's right. x times 2 equals 10. Right? Well, if x times, well, in other words, this is if you did this, worked it out. It's x equals 5. So if x equals 5, you do x gets x times 2. It's guaranteed x equals 10. Right? And how about this? x gets y. y equals 6. Close but no cigar. Ben, do you know? What, what gets replaced with what? Uh, uh, equals x equals y? No, that doesn't make No, wait, wait, wait. It's... <laughs> no. Come on, you guys. What textual... Remember we had... Remember what happens... What textual substitution do you have to do? X replaced by y. X replaced by y. Well, 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 which one is it? It's this expression with what? X replaced by Y. X gets Y. But is there an X in here? No. So what is that textual substitution? Y equals Z. Yeah. Y. Y. A little trick question. Do you, do you remember when we did textual substitution and we did something? The order of it. Where nothing changed. Where, where, yeah, where the, yeah where, where there was no variable in the expression, remember? And then it was just that expression with no substitution, right? So is it the case that y equals 6, and if you do x gets y, and it's guaranteed that y equals 6? Mm -hmm. It's a little trivial, but true nevertheless. All right, enough of this nonsense. We will continue on uh, on Thursday, right?